So hey there everyone and welcome back to another Wednesday Reflection with me, Mikey, at St. Anne's Church in Egbeth. Um, if you didn't catch um, the last Wednesday Reflection, it was brilliant. We had Ian talking to us about um, the, the woman who was washing Jesus' feet. And, and that's it's such a brilliant story and, and one of the things that Ian said that, that really struck me was about the jealousy of the disciples and how you know it was their job to be loving Jesus and they were complaining and they were moaning and, and they were trying to condemn a woman for literally loving Jesus and and I think um you know the, there's like a, a little bit of an irony in that because you know I'm always looking over the hedge you know I'm always trying to see oh what, what are other people doing and, and I'm trying to compare myself to that but Jesus just says to them look this woman's doing a, a, a beautiful thing so stop complaining and maybe if you were serving me, you, you, you wouldn't have time to, to be moaning about what this, this woman is doing. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's a big challenge to us uh, as a church. And, um, but the, the main thing about that passage for me, um, was that Jesus says these words. He said, um, she's preparing me for burial. And it, that's such a profound thing. Because what we have to realise is that the Holy Spirit must have given this woman divine inspiration, like a like a divine knowledge to know that at that moment she, she must worship Jesus because she knows that he's about to die for us. So she prepares him for burial. And and that that's actually really incredibly profound. And that's what we celebrated. This week was we celebrated not just the death but the resurrection of Jesus. We we had our Easter service and um, it was great to be with absolutely everyone. And although you know we, we couldn't um, have all of the hugs that I, I would have wanted, although that time is hopefully coming soon. Fingers crossed. Um, you know, we we could still um be there and just worship God together. Um, it it was um. It was just lovely to to be part of the of of the band um as well. Shout out to Tim and Liz. Um, you know, you guys are, are absolutely awesome to work with. And you know, we we just worshiped God together and we celebrated the resurrection of, of Jesus um safely as well. That, I'm I'm quite happy to say that. Um, you know, another another big shout out to Paul Roberts. If if you're watching this, uh, Paul does a fantastic job of of um helping with the seating plans and, and, you know, making sure everyone's absolutely safe. So yeah, I, like really, really happy to have seen everyone this uh, Sunday. And it's got me thinking today um, in our Easter, um, uh, post Easter Wednesday reflection um, about the, the re about the resurrection. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's such an, an amazing thing that um, literally splits history and, um, for me, everything is is centered on on like this this period of time where where Jesus conquers the grave. You know, it's it's such an an amazing thing, and um, you know, thank you to everyone um who responded in the comments to my last video. It, it was amazing to to interact with you, and and I want to post with you um uh. I want to give you another question to answer in, in the comments below is, and the question is, what does the resurrection mean to you? What does the resurrection mean to you? Uh, because the resurrection means so many different things to so many different people. And it's part of the, um, of the beauty of, of the church is that we see the resurrection have an impact on everyone's individual story in their own little individual ways that all paint a beautiful picture about what Christ means to us as a church. The, the, the resurrection is is such an incredible, in, in, incredible thing. Now, but before you go and answer that question, what does the resurrection mean to you? I want to explore quickly, what does the resurrection mean to Peter? Because one of the first stories that we have after Jesus' resurrection is Jesus appearing to Simon Peter. Now, just to give you some context to this, Peter is um, back where he was before. 
um, but before he met Jesus, and, and that's fishing. He's fishing on a boat with his mates, just going, you know, from day to day life. It's it's been a hard day as well. Um, it's, it says in 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 the passage that he was hungry, so he, he he mustn't have done he mustn't have done very well on the boat that day. And Jesus appears to him, and the last conversation that those two had, Jesus and Peter, was Peter telling Jesus, "I will never deny you." And Jesus telling me, you're going to deny me three times. So turn with me if you can, or just listen along to uh, John chapter 21. And we start at verse 15. It says this. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything but you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. So Peter goes from denying Jesus three times to being met by Jesus where he's at, met by Jesus in his own sin, in his own denial, to Jesus barging into his life completely unexpectedly, that the life that he thought he'd left behind, but without Jesus had returned to. And in that space and in that moment, Jesus comes right alongside them and restores him three times to love and gives him the call to follow Jesus. He he says at the end in verse 19, he charges him, he says, follow me. And that's an incredibly beautiful thing because for Peter, he went and you know, took up his old life again and Jesus restores him. Now, for me, the resurrection um, and what that means to me can pretty much be summed up in this story here that, that we read in the Bible in John 21, where Jesus appears to Peter, because I know that in my life, I have denied Jesus. I have said things and I've done things that harm myself, things that harm my own relationship with God and things that, um, you know, harm my relationship with other people as well. Perhaps there's even ways that I I live my life now that um, I know harms the the way um, I I live my life in in relation to creation. You know, may, maybe perhaps I'm denying God in in some of those things. Now I don't know about your life, but maybe there are things that you can think of where, you know, you have denied Jesus. I know I deny Jesus, and and that's why I try not to ever. I, I would deny Jesus if I ever walked past a homeless person, or if I ever walked past someone who was hungry, because I know that Jesus says, whatever you do for the least of these, you also did for me. So for us, we are also charged. Jesus says to you and Jesus says to me, do you love me? I say, yeah, and no, he's like, no, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Tend my lambs. Do you love me? Follow me. And it doesn't matter what we have faced in our life, Jesus constantly is constantly calling us back to him. So I look forward to, um, after we pray in a minute, to reading your comments. And I, I would love for you to tell me, what does the resurrection mean to you? Because for me, it means that I get a, a, another chance and a second chance and a third chance again and continually continually get opportunities to show the resurrection love of jesus 
that no matter what we go through and um, no matter what um we face in our lives we get to, to to show jesus's love jesus says feed my sheep we get to be shepherds we get to lead people into green pastures of, of hope so what does the resurrection mean to you and i look forward to, to reading all of those beautiful beautiful stories but until then um let's let's have a quick pray together and then we'll end our video So, Father God, we thank you for the story of you, the, the word made flesh, resurrected in the um, celebration of Easter that you appeared to Simon Peter. You appeared to someone who denied you not once, but three times. God, and three times you restored him to love. God, three times you allowed him to affirm and declare his purpose in you. Father God, we are so sorry for the times in which we too deny you. But I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would reveal those things to us. God, where we fail to show that love. The moments where we deny time and time again, more than three times. Where we deny the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. I pray that from here, you would restore us to your love for us. Our love for each other and the love that binds us to absolutely everybody in the world. We pray that we will be shepherds of your people, guided by your Holy Spirit, to guide and lead others into your love. Allow us to do that by showing your love and by serving others. In Jesus' name, we ask all of these things. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.